be sure to reinstall the plates in the unit in the same manner in which they were removed. It is necessary that the gasketed side of the plates be faced toward the stationary in-frame, and that the plate next to the stationary in-frame be the D-plate. It is imperative that the plates be hung in the unit in accordance with the element composition diagram, which is on the drawing provided with the unit. The drawing, which is shipped with each unit, describes that unit in detail. The drawing number, which is located in the lower right-hand corner, is also the shop order number, which is shown on the data plate located on the stationary end frame. On all GX unit drawings, a plate assembly sequence is shown in the lower left-hand portion of the drawing. The plate code refers to the letters stamped in the upper right-hand corner of the plate when viewed from the front of the unit. An example of a four-plate sequence from the above plate pack is shown here. Note that only the code letter in the upper right-hand corner of each plate is pertinent. Drawings for all UX, GC, and GF units will contain a sketch in the lower left-hand corner which illustrates an A plate and a B plate. An A plate is a plate which has the porthole gaskets located in the upper left and lower left position of the plate. A B plate has the porthole gaskets located in the upper right and lower right portion of the plate. The element composition diagram is shown at the bottom of the drawing. This diagram provides complete information necessary to install the plates correctly in the heat exchanger. Note that the diagram has an A side and a B side. This simply refers to whether a plate is an A plate or a B plate as previously identified. You will also note that there are boxes in which numbers appear. These numbers always start with a 1 on either the A side or the B side and then progress alternately from one side to the other up to the specified number of plates that are in the heat exchanger. By the way, the last digits in the model number of the heat exchanger are the number of plates in the unit. In other words, a model UXP 200 H 8 SP 065 unit will have 65 plates. There is also a box containing a four-digit number, this number tells you the plate porthole piercing. As an example, a plate designated 1, 2, 3, 4, or not designated with a number at all, will be a plate that has all four portholes pierced. Again, referring to the A plate and the B plate sketch in the lower left-hand corner of the drawing, you will note each porthole has an identifying number, 1, 2, 3, 4. The upper right-hand porthole is number 1, the lower right-hand porthole is number 2. The lower left-hand porthole is number 3. And the upper left-hand porthole is number 4. This is the porthole identification regardless of whether the plate is an A or a B plate. You will see that an A plate becomes a B plate when it's rotated 180 degrees. For a plate with less than four portholes pierced, this will change the plate's designation. For example, this is an O230 plate. Looking at the element composition diagram shown in Figure 16 of the installation manual, this plate must be located in position number 12 for proper heat exchanger performance. After the plates are correctly installed in the unit, the four longer bolts should be placed into the places provided at 1, 2, 3, and 4 only. Tighten the bolts by hand as much as possible. Then tighten the bolts with a wrench in the proper sequence as shown in Figure 26A of the installation manual. Install the remaining bolts in the places provided. Tighten the bolts uniformly so that the movable frame is always parallel with the fixed frame within one quarter of an inch. The unit should be tightened to the same plate pack dimension that was received from the factory, usually the average of Amax and Amen. The dimension should be checked using a metal tape, such as being shown, and the dimension should be uniform at all bolt locations. 
The unit is now ready to be placed back into service using the proper startup procedure. After the unit is confirmed to be operating satisfactorily, the shroud should be replaced if provided. The shroud is provided primarily to protect the unit from damage from foreign objects or debris and for personnel protection. 